Hello. This video is about how to um, create your own Windows theme. That is, the background picture, the colours and the sort of sounds it makes and so on. Um, this little gadget here is my recording device. Uh, BB Flashback Express Recorder. Um, normally the way I get into setting up a theme or just changing the desktop wallpaper, this picture you see, is by clicking with the right hand button, so a right click and choose Personalize. And your stuff comes up here as you can see. Um, there are other ways into it. Um, you can, for example, go to Start and Control Panel and you may have different views. If you have this view then you just go to Personalization and there it is. Or you might have the large icons view, it's the same, you just go to personalization, just the same. Or you might have the category view, in which case you have appearance and personalization, but you can choose change the theme, and it's the same. So, however, you get in here, you're here. Okay, and there it is. Actually, it's a bit too big, isn't it? Let me just make it a bit sort of reasonable size. There we go. And you can just click on one of these themes and voila, it's changed. Um, but how do you set one for yourself? What if you have your own pictures and you want to use those? Well, I'll show you. Pick one that is more or less like what you want. So I've chosen nature because I kind of like the sounds that are in that one. Um, and I suppose you've got a set of pictures somewhere, you've put them in a folder, so you just go to desktop background and you find your pictures, there's a load in here. Now I've done this before so my folder is probably here already, but if it isn't you just go to browse and you find it on your computer somewhere, there's some pictures somewhere that are in there. On mine unfortunately they're in a complicated place, um, they're on the network but um, you just go to the folder wherever your pictures are and you find them. Um, on mine they're in the network as I say and I've, I've put them here previously just to make life easy. So there's my folder with my pictures. It's gonna, I'm going to do a theme based on the Shard which is London's new tallest tower in Europe or something of that sort. Select all if they're not selected already and choose how you want it to be on the screen. You can either make it fill the screen, so it will just take whichever is the shortest side and make sure it fits the screen and it'll just go off the edge where it doesn't fit, basically. You can make it fit, which means if you have a look at that, it takes the shortest side and makes sure that that fits top to bottom or side to side as the case may be and it'll put just black or some other colour in the background according to the nature of the theme. So just for the difference, fill is like that. It makes sure it covers everything even if it chops off a bit of the picture. Whereas fit, it doesn't chop the picture up at all, it just makes sure that all of it is on the screen. There's stretch. If your picture is too small for the screen it will be stretched to fit even if that changes the aspect ratio so it looks stretched um, it, or distorted. Tile, that will be, that's useful if you have a small picture and it'll just repeat multiple times over the screen. Sometimes tiling works well for big pictures. This actual picture is much bigger than my screen so it's just showing you a part of it. Full size though. And center, it will show you the center of the screen of the picture. You can see it doesn't make it fit, it just clunk, there's the centre bit and like it a lot or not. I'm going to go for fill, I usually use that but sometimes stretch is more appropriate. And I don't really want the picture changing every half an hour, I'll have it change maybe twice a day or something. And random order, shuffle. Save changes, that's all you have to do here. And now you've changed the desktop background, but there's other things like these are a bit purplish at the moment. 
Let's change that. You click. Did you see what I did? I just clicked on window color here, or this thing, and you can change it to any of these colors. Um, I rather like blue, and it's going to match what I've got anyway, isn't it? Roughly. So the shard. It's a, it's a bluish thingy. So I'm going to. It's a little intense. So let me bring the intensity down. You also have a, a transparency option if you don't like transparency. You can turn it off, but you can still adjust the colour with the slider. I kind of prefer the transparency, it works on my computer okay. Some computers don't like it, it's a bit heavy for them. Too much processing power. Um, you can, if you prefer, change the colour with these sliders. You've got all sorts of controls, right? Goodness knows what you can do with them, make them a bit dimmer, you can make them brighter or darker. It's pretty good. I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to go here and then wind the intensity down. There is advanced as well. What advanced means is actually old fashioned. This is how you had to change colours in old versions of Windows. Um, you click on the thing you want to change, like the title bar and you change the size of it and the font that's used, the colour of the font. Colour 1 and colour 2 here, you see there's a bit of shading. It goes from colour 1, it shades across to colour 2. So if I want them to shade from red into ooh, magenta, well I can do that if I really want to. And you've got all the other items. You click on them and you change the colours as you see fit. This is the so-called advanced way. You change every little component and it's an absolute pain. And you can even um, do some advanced colorings for some of them, I think, um, where if you go other, you have a whole color thingy and you can drag this around and pick your color, change the intensity, add it to these custom colours, so those are the extra ones that you can use. You can make your own set, basically. For most people's purposes, that is way over the top. Um, something, just doing something with the sliders here is, is enough for nearly everybody. It's certainly enough for me. <laughs> uh, and you save the changes. Whoosh. That's the colours. The sounds. You see, the theme is appearing. It's coming as an unsaved theme. We'll save it in a minute. Change the sounds. Windows makes sounds. Bink, the ones with speakers next to them here are the things that are making sounds with the current scheme. You can pick one of the existing schemes, there's loads of them. Um, or you can simply uh, keep with the theme sounds that you like. If you really want to, you can use your own sounds. Just click the browse button and it will take you to the folder where Windows Media are kept. Um, you can have your own folder in here and it will be full of WAV sound files. You pick your own WAVs and it will play them. Mail received or whatever you want, set it. New mail. Fine does that, but you can set your own sounds in there just by browsing and telling it which one you want to use. I'm not going to change my sounds. Screensaver. Again, you can pick a custom screensaver. Most of the Windows themes come with one or the other screensavers set. And you click the down arrow and pick another one if you want it and change the settings. On mine, <coughs> it's greyed out. Because I've done a little hack on the registry because I don't like themes changing my screensaver. Um, I like the setting 15 minutes, on resume, display the log on screen, and bubbles. I don't happen to like the other screensavers very much. So I've set it permanently, and none of the settings elsewhere on the computer will change it. I'll show you how to do that quickly. You may not have admin rights, I may not have admin rights actually because I'm using a special account on this computer. Oh, well, I have. There you go. 
what you have to do is open the registry editor. You've got to start and you put in reg edit. Did you see that? And when it finds it, you just open the program. This is for editing the computer's registry. The registry, if you edit it wrong, your computer may never boot again and you'll have to reinstall Windows. So if you're going to do this, get it right. It's not that difficult. It's actually quite easy, but just be warned, it's done at your own risk. You go to these places, H key current user, software, click the little triangle to open it out, policies, it's a Windows policy you're going to change, Microsoft, Windows of course, and we have stuff here, you go to control panel because we're going to change all those settings, desktop. Now on mine, I already have this key, screensaved.exe, but if, if I didn't have one, I would right click here, new dword 32-bit value, and I'm not allowed to do it, okay, because I don't have admin rights in this user on this computer. You probably will, most users on their home computers have admin rights. New D word 32 bit value. What you enter in, the D word will be called screensave.exe, S C R N S A V E dot E X E. I've always seen it in capitals, I've never tried it not in capitals, so I would do the same. And the value, the data that you put in there, is the name of the screensaver you want as your default. Those screensavers are in C, C drive, Windows, System32 folder. So search it to see the names you've got. Start at SCR, and there they are. You've got bubble, Bubbles, Mystify, Photo, Screensaver, Ribbons, SS Text 3D, and Screensave, whatever that is. So there they are. So pick your screensaver. Note the name exactly, and just put it in as the value in that registry key. And all you have to do when you've done that is close the registry key. You probably have to restart Windows, but then your screensaver will be permanently set, and no theme change will change it. If you want to change it, you have to go into the registry and either change that value or delete that key. You can right-click on it and delete it, and restart Windows. So there's the theme. Unsaved. What do I do to save it? Well, it's very easy. I just choose Save Theme. So what am I going to call it? Bingo. There it is. Save. Now. If you want to send this theme to a friend or put it on a computer, on the internet somewhere, so that other people can have it, you have to do something slightly different. Having saved it, you now right click and you choose Save Theme for Sharing. And it'll make a theme pack file. Um, I'll stick it on the desktop. Okay. the commas out. There we go. Save. And there it is. Now, um, you can send that to people, well that's quite a big file, if you have smaller pictures that's fine. I've got quite a lot of pictures in here as you can see from my photos. Um, if you would like to uh, use this theme yourself, you can. Um, I'll put it on my website. Um, in fact, I already have done a previous version of it. Um, I'll show you the link. Now I suppose I might as well show you the link. 
let's go to my website. I hope Internet Explorer doesn't complain. It's a, a funny old browser. My website is alphadukana.co.uk. Here it is. Um, the pictures change all the time, uh, and I have little blog articles, so you know, have a have a read if you like. Um, I've put the theme under galleries, wallpapers, and themes. You just click on that, and it'll take you to the page, and you can download it here. I'll put some more up eventually, um, but so to download it, just click the link, and. You can either open it, in which case it will set the theme, or you can save it on your desktop. I'll stick it in my downloads folder or wherever, it doesn't matter. I've already got it, so we don't need to down actually download it, but that's what you do. And when you've got it, if you want to set the theme, let me just set another one for the moment. Okay. If you want to set your theme, just double click on it and whoosh, it does it. And I, because I've got one already, of course, it's made another one. Um, it's a bit silly, old Windows is. Or, but uh, You can delete a theme, by the way, by unselect by choosing another one and then deleting it. Okay, whoosh, I've got, got rid of the spare one and I can empty my recycle bin just for luck. There we go. Now, if clicking on your theme or double clicking on the theme doesn't actually work there's another thing you can do you can right click on it and use a zip program like 7zip or winzip to extract the files because they are if you if you actually look in the archive it's basically a folder and a theme program in there are all the pictures. They're just zipped up, basically. There's nothing special about it. So you can extract the whole lot to a folder on your desktop. If you've got 7-zip or WinZip, extract them to uh, to there. OK, whoosh. It'll make a folder. There they are. And there are the photos inside in that folder. So if you want to change your background in that way, you can't make a new theme from it easily. Let me choose another one, just for exa to the example. So we have something else. I go to desktop background, and I have to browse to my desktop. Okay, and there's the folder here. Okay, I go in there, and there are all my pictures, and I can set them as the background to change as I like. Okay, the other items, because you can't make the theme up, you have to manually alter each one as you like yourself. Um, it's almost the same and then you can save the theme. Okay, um, I'm going to go back to my proper one. Just delete that for the moment. There we go. Whoosh, double junk in there. I don't need that at the moment. But that's what you can do if, if Windows doesn't know what to do with the theme pack file. Just unzip it. Uh, there's a link on that web page I showed you, and actually the photos I think down in their bottom corner here actually have my um, website address on there as well, if it happens to fit on your screen. Um, I suppose if I were to choose fit, you would see it. Well, just about behind the taskbar, I'd have to hide the taskbar next. It's, there's always something, isn't there? Yeah, oh, and then you can see my website, alphatucana.co.uk. It doesn't work against that background, but there it is. Now, um, what else should I show you? That's basically it, I think, isn't it? So, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope it's useful. And goodbye.